Bye for one more chat. Yeah. How are you? You good? Mwah. Oh, that was some nice wine. El Suriala. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. Hello. My name is John Hay, and here we are for uh, another chat. This is day 32, and uh, we're still locked up. And um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say to you anymore. Uh, we've been locked up now for 32 days and there's no end in sight, so we'll see what happens. There's nothing much we can do. I'm fair feeling like a tiger in a cage, right? On YouTube. Yeah, I know. I know. You're feeling like tigers in a cage. Well, let's see. What have I been up to? I've been thinking a lot about how fortunate we are to be living in me, me in Spain, my sisters in, in Canada, some people in Europe and in Canada. Even though this is really bad and it's really difficult and there's going to be uh, probably financial depression after, at least it's, these are places where we're being taken care of. Uh, the government has spoken, the government has acted, there are food supplies, there, we, we all have homes and uh, we're allowed out to go out and buy food and so we really are the lucky ones. I mean I've been sitting here complaining, yeah, but that's just because I'm not used to being locked up. But uh, yeah, you too, I know. Nobody likes to be locked up. Nobody likes it. Uh, and so um, I've been complaining a lot about, uh, hey, you put me in a cage, I want to get out of my cage, I want to get out of my cage. But it's not really a cage, this is my home, yeah? This is my home, and uh, all my projects are here, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, we have to be thankful for. Um, and when it's over, when it's over, we're going to come out and we're going to see our friends and, uh, and everything is going to, uh, to be okay. Um, it's very curious though, this thing. I have my doubts that they're not telling us the truth. Yeah? I believe that they're lying to us big time. Um, I have this instinct, you know? This I believe that it's a cloud that's going around the world and it's making people sick like a, like a big contaminated cloud or something, yeah? And um, I, don't, uh, I don't believe that it's actually just a sickness. I think that it's a cloud of radioactive um, particles that's why they're making us stay at home so severely and that the people that are overly exposed to it that have, that have weaknesses they develop a very very bad cough and, uh, and they die yeah? I mean I have my doubts about it I'm not saying that that's what it is but the way it was in China and then it was in Europe and then it was in America it's like it did a little turn of the world you know and every, every place took its turn in it happening. It's not like it happened everywhere at the same time, which would make more sense, because people have been traveling, people have been traveling for, like for Christmas, and people traveled all over the world, bing, bang, boom, bam, boom, bam, bam, people traveled, yeah? Because it hadn't come out yet. China was starting, but, uh, and when China had it, nobody else had it, you know? And then all of a sudden you started getting a case here, a case there, a case here, a case there. And, uh, but I mean, first Italy got it, Spain didn't have it, and then Spain got it, yeah? And then Italy got it, it's like, it's something that's passing through. And I think that they don't want to be honest with us because they don't want to create panic. And that they don't want to accept the blame for the situation. I have my doubts, because eh? it doesn't make sense. 
Normally, it should have started in China and then spread all over the world at the same time. That would have made sense. But the way it seems to be like one thing that's just moving around, that doesn't make sense. Uh, so, um, whatever it is, I just cooperate until the authorities say that it's safe to go outside. I know that uh, last week I saw on the internet uh, a report. I saw a report on the news, it was real, it wasn't something like somebody made up, about a fire in uh, the Chernobyl uh, nuclear plant. Yeah, that there was a uh, fire spreading and it was threatening the Chernobyl nu nuclear plant. Okay, so now, even if it doesn't get to the Chernobyl nuclear plant, everything that's around it is contaminated. Yeah? And uh, I've heard about it once, and I never heard about it again. I mean, that's pretty important news. Yeah? But they said it once and then it disappeared, I never heard about it again. Maybe that's the real threat. And so people that have compromised lungs, okay, are getting, are getting this illness. Um, um, and it's outside. That's why they don't want us to go in the mountains, they don't want us to go in the, by the beach. They're not telling us the truth. I'm quite sure of it. But anyway, we're going to go with what the doctors say, and we're going to believe them. But I, I, I'm starting to doubt that there's not a whole bunch of hype put on to some kind of other mistake that, the, the, uh, that may have happened somewhere. Because even last month when the moon was full, I was looking at it, and um, you could see a bump on the bottom of the moon. I don't know, maybe that's the space station, it doesn't let the light shine properly. Could be. There was, there was a lot of activity in the space station, there were shuttles going back and forth. And um, the, uh, mm, you can see it. So there's something wrong with the planet. Yeah, because the moon, is, even when it was full, and there was no clouds in the sky, it was not completely round. Yeah? And then they have these um, people that study electronic waves of the planet, within the planet's core. And uh, this, these, these studies haven't been going on for that long, so I mean, they're not, uh, they don't have that much data. Yeah? But last week, though something happened in the cosmos, on, on the Earth, in the cosmos, it was uh, something that, that came in through the um, ozone protection, through the atmosphere, and entered into the planet. And it made all these waves. Normally, the thing is like this. You have the planet here, and you've got a thing like this with all these lines, and those are the waves, yeah? They have very slight, slight differences, but that's basically what it is. But when this thing came in from behind, yeah, and entered into the planet, everything went berserk. The lines started flying all over the place, and lasted a few minutes, and then, oop, oh, it went back to normal. You could see it was trying to, the earth was trying to say protect itself. It was grabbing all this stuff that was coming in and forgetting about everything else that was important, just, you know, and then it went away. And it went all the way back to normal. But then, there were tornadoes. There was, I think, three tornadoes in, uh, you know, over the weekend in, in America, you yeah? So maybe you know, because of all of that electronic movement, that's what created the, to the tornadoes, yeah? And I believe that maybe that thing that came into the thing, into the, into the, that had to be the shuttle. Because I was watching, they have a shuttle in the moon station. I was watching how, because <laughs> I wanted to see what was going on there. And it was on the same day that the, 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 the shuttle came back, was the same day that, uh, that all this stuff happened on the thing, yeah? So, uh, by sending shuttles to the moon and to, to Mars and looking for life on Mars, we're forgetting about the importance of maintaining the planet in its natural harmony, in its natural balance. I truly believe that this, this uh, could also be uh, the wrath of the planet. The wrath of the planet trying to get rid of that virus that she calls man. Yeah, because we've done so much damage to her and we're just not listening to so her. Somehow the gods, the planet, something happened so that we would sit 
on our asses and we would think about what the fuck is going on in this world. Yeah. And people are so stupid that they don't even think. All they do is they go on their chat boxes, they show pictures of their food, they show... Nobody's having intelligent discussions. Everybody says, oh, look at my cat, look at my cat, did. look at this, look at that, look at that. But nobody's talking about anything important. You know? We're not going to learn anything from this. Once, once they say that we can go back out, we're going to go right back to normal with all the damage and all the plastic and all the gasoline. We're going to end up planes flying. We're going to go right back to normal as if uh, we never heard the warning. Yeah? And then we're really going to be in trouble. Yeah? So I, for one, I'm going to uh, start thinking a lot more about the planet. Yeah? And I'm going to treat it as if it was my only fun, my only saving grace. So, today I got back to painting, eh? Gdaligos, <laughs> aren't you happy about that? I got back to painting. Yeah, I'm working on the third eye. And um, I did about three hours. I'm going to do about three hours a day or so because it's, um, <laughs> it's fun. I had taken my studio apart because I was going home. I was going to Montreal, right? And then when this thing hit, I thought it was like a week, two weeks, three weeks, so I'm not going to bother undoing all the work that I already did. But now that I see, now that it's the day 32, and actually I think it's day 33. Yeah, it's day 33, not day 32. That's right. Um, uh, yeah, so you know, once once the second 15-day period was up, then they just slapped on another 15-day period, which makes a grand total of 45 days. And I take my 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 thing, my studio apart, my painting, my fine painting area, because you can't roll up a wet painting. There's no point in painting, paint, starting a painting if I'm going to be going to Montreal, because when you roll it up, you're going to damage it. But with all this. So all this being locked up, and now as I try doing stuff on the internet, but you know, it just bores me, it bores me. I need the fingers, I need something, I need to touch things. I can't just go ding, ding, ding. I get bored to tears, and I also get depressed. I get depressed. It's nice to have a little bit of contact with people. Mm -hmm. But you haven't seen it in a while, the conversations, you have time for conversations, time to get in touch with some people that maybe you haven't talked to in a long time. But, um, and maybe watch movies at night, but more than that, uh, no thank you. That's not life. You know, that maybe the Trump man, we're going to get used to this being our social, the computer being our social value. Right? And we're going to forget what it was like to be flamboyant, artistic, dynamic human beings. We're just going to turn into the destroyers. So anyway, yeah, I was painting the third eye, which is going to be one of my masterpieces. Yeah. This is going to be officially the last piece in the Rebirth collection. And then I'm going to start something else. Yeah. And then I don't, well, I always say the last piece. Him and the Wall of Decadence was supposed to be, I was supposed to finish that piece and not paint anymore. That was my work. And so, well, no, then you have to do the night. <laughs> There's always something else. <laughs> yeah. And so I got back down to painting today and it felt really nice because I can open the window and I can see the trees and hear the little birdies and it's so quiet, there's nobody out there. Oh, I don't have the noise that used to bother me so much last year. And so um, I was working with some nice blues. And uh, it was like I did the, the background of the painting already. And now what I'm doing is the eye. So there's a third eye, there's an eye within an eye, within an eye, in the middle of the painting, really big. But it's not a real eye. It's, it's a surrealistic eye. Yeah. And. Um, Fuck, this thing isn't working properly. And um, and so I'm, I'm quite I'm quite um, I'm quite happy with that because 
this is going to make it a lot easier in the end. I mean, I, I maybe because this this painting is going to be the logo for the Triple S Society, the Surrealism Salvation Strategy, and um, oh, I would like to at least get the base color, the, the first coat done, so that if I if I want to use it before I take it back, I take it out of storage. If I want to use it in some kind of um, presentation, well, then I will have it. Yeah. And uh, other than that, we're taking short walks around the block. Uh, yesterday, I wanted to paint, yeah, but my shoulder was so sore I couldn't lift my hand up and hold it up for, without pain. And so I said, how am I going to have to paint with this? such a fucked up shoulder? I've had so many accidents on the shoulder, <laughs> it isn't funny. <laughs> I've fallen off bicycles, I've fallen off motorcycles, I've fallen off cliffs. <laughs> so much damage done to this whole area here and here. <laughs> but I have a lot of pain. And so last night, when I was watching a movie, I was saying, well, how am I going to work with this pain, this pain? And then, it's very strange. My dog started barking, staring at something, and then I could feel like hands. Not my hands. I could feel hands touching me, pushing points on certain parts. Uh, I could feel it. Uh, fixing things inside. And uh, this morning I woke up and I had no pain. And something was pulled in my eye and I was massaging it. And it wasn't my hand because my hand was immobile. I could feel something working on it and today the pain is gone. I don't know if it's the yoga, just putting things back into place or if because I asked uh, to fix my arm so that I could paint, it got fixed. So, I do believe in magic. I think the magic is everywhere. Right, Daddy? Daddy Ghost? Don't you think the magic is everywhere? I mean, just look at this place. This place is full of magic. Huh? It's nice. Alright, so, um... That's all I have to say for today. Um, nothing new happening, and uh, nobody to hug. So um, I'm gonna say good night to you, and hope that you are well. And we'll see you again in a couple of days. Good night, my children of the night. <laughs>